Hello all, uh, this is Narain uh, from School of Chemical and Biotechnology Shastra. This is a short uh, video as part of the Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics 2 course. We are in lecture 5 part 3 where uh, we will see how to apply Rolle's law to generate vapor liquid equilibrium data for a binary component system. A quick recap on what we saw in lecture 5.2 is as follows. So if you apply Rolle's law for a binary component vapor liquid system, now we will have these two equations which are all for the component balance or the, ba the mass balance for the component in the vapor phase and in the liquid phase. This is a Rolle's law written for each of the component. So you have Y1P is equal to X1P1S. Uh, Y1 and X1 denotes mole fraction of component 1 in the liquid phase and in the vapor phase. Uh, P is the uh, total pressure and P1S, P2S is the saturated vapor pressure uh, at the given temperature. So P is the total pressure of the system. The total pressure of the system P is also given by summation equation as X1 P1S plus X2 P2S. Uh, typically, now this is, I will also write the units here so that uh, it would be a good recollection. Now these are all mole fractions, so these don't have units, so these are fractional terms. P which is the total pressure, the typical SI unit uh, is pascals but we usually tend to use the unit of bar so the pressure is usually written in bar so whatever is this unit of pressure will be the same unit of pressure for the saturated vapor system also so this is also bar now if you have pressure unit written in atmosphere then saturated vapor pressure should also be written in atmosphere so essentially uh, the unit of P and PS the saturated vapor pressure should be consistent okay so this is what we need to know now listed here are the variables in the system obviously these two are functions of temperatures or they are known values at a given temperature so you have these four variables and you have equation like say this is first equation this is second equation and out of these three only two of the equations are independent so you have only two equations you are independent so you have six variables so there are totally six variables here okay I am not accounting for this because either these values are known or they themselves are only functions of temperature so you have six variables four equations so the degrees of freedom is uh, six minus four which is two variables so that means for two variables you need to assume now with this background let's uh, continue what we see now let us assume uh, that the temperature is known okay so uh, the known variable is temperature okay right and so that means this is given now with this information we are going to solve for a binary component system and generate something called PXY plot so we are going to generate uh, the PXY plot at a given temperature for a binary component system. Now let's write the equations again. So Y1P is equal to X1 P1S, right? And P equal to, let's say, write the summation P1S plus X2. P2S. Now because x1 plus x2 is 1, so because we know that uh, uh, the summation equation x1 plus x2 equal to 1, so if you use this equation here, the summation equation can be written as x1 P1S plus 1 minus x1 P2S. Is it clear? So this is what we, we can write uh, eventually the summation equation. Now, because the temperature is known, uh, because the temperature is known, it means P1S and P2S, which is the saturated vapor pressure, the saturated vapor pressure 
of the component is also known okay so is also known so that means uh, we know the value of these two okay so this is known right this is all is known what is unknown right what is the unknown variable now is uh, we do not know the value of x1 we do not know the value of y1 we do not know the value of p is it clear and we have two equations now let's say this and this okay we have already used uh, this one equation and the other equation is y1 plus y2 equal to 1 we don't we have not listed x1 uh, x2 and y2 so if you list x2 and y2 eventually you will use this summation equation so you have only two equations this and this but you need to solve three variables that means you need to assume now variable temperature is given but we need to assume out of these three one can you just think which uh, variable can be assumed uh, do you think is it possible to assume p right so is this possible to assume uh, uh, p right do you think uh, this is possible it may not for the simple reason that uh, p can be any value it could be any positive value so we do not know what about these two right what about these two variables that you see here what about these two uh, x1 and x2 so if you see this x1 and x2 still this could be any value but uh, what is the speciality of these two variables these two variables are bounded is it clear these are bounded variables what do you mean by bounded variables the value of x1 and y1 can only range between 0 and 1 because they are mole fraction so that means though it is it can be any value between 0 and 1 it is bounded unlike pressure so that means it might be possible to assume x or y and then solve the problem right so can you think of an iterative procedure or do you think like can you assume any one of these and then proceed uh, to find the other two so that means uh, let me say like this now you are already given the value of t so remember t is given so p1s is known and p2s is also known is it clear now can you assume let's say x1 and try to obtain try to compute y1 and p this is one route or can you assume let's say y1 and then compute x1 and p so do you think it is possible so you can pause the video here and then think how it uh, you can either do this way or this way of solving Now once let us assume that you have thought now just check how far that the algorithm that you have proposed uh, matches with what I am discussing. I am discussing only one of this route. So for a given temperature so that means P1S and P2S is known. I will assume X1. The moment I assume x1, so this is the first step, so this is already there in the question. The second step, I will assume x1. I will assume x1 such that, that x1 is always between uh, 0 and 1. So I will assume any value between 0 and 1. Uh, the moment I assume x1, now if you can see, you can calculate the total pressure because the total pressure is x1 p1s plus 1 minus x1 p2s. The moment you calculate uh, P, which is the total pressure, you can calculate Y1 because Y1 P is equal to X1 P1S, uh, which means Y1 is equal to X1 P1S by P. So that means the moment you assume the value of X, you can get total pressure and you can get the mole fraction in the vapor phase. 
this is clear uh, can you assume the other way around and do can you just do it I am not going to discuss but the other way around should also be equally possible I will take it up uh, in an another video on this but let me extend this algorithm uh, with what you can practice is let's say again the first step for a binary component system uh, uh, sorry uh, for a binary component system the temperature is given so that means from the value of temperature you can know P1s and P2s now let me just put a table here so you can assume the value of x1 so what is the range of x1 between 0 and 1 let's say I will assume it uh, uh, as mm, the uh, in the delta of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So that means the moment I assume these values, eventually I can get the total pressure as uh, x1 p1s plus uh, 1 minus x1 p2s. So I will use this for every corresponding value of x1, I will get the total pressure. Then I will get uh, the vapor pressure. Uh, uh, phase fraction so which is y1 is equal to x1 p1s uh, divided by p so that means for every value i get like this so that means you can get for a whole range of x1 you can get a range of pressure values and a range of y values now use this data and let us see what happens in the plot what i want is you have to take a typical system, solve this following this methodology, try to plot x1 on the abscissa ah, and then try to plot pressure on the y-axis and then see how it looks. And so this x1 ranges from 0 to 1. On the same plot, assume the x-axis is to be now y1 and uh, the y-axis is again pressure so on a single plot uh, uh, sorry on a single plot I wanted you to uh, draw x1 versus p and also y1 versus p both x1 and y1 can be on the x-axis itself and because it ranges only from 0 to 1 the other plot that I want you to practice uh, for a typical system is uh, plot x1 on the x-axis or the abscissa and then plot y1 uh, on the ordinate and then see how this plot looks like right so let me quickly go through what is the algorithm that you follow to generate this pxy curve so the temperature is given the moment the temperature is given you can calculate p1s and p2s or the p1s and p2s values are known so you assume the values of x1 in the range of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that till 1. So in the range of uh, between 0 to 1. For every values of x, calculate the total pressure from the summation equation which is x1 p1s plus 1 minus x1 p2s. Remember p1s, p2s is already known because these are saturated pressures known from temperature. Y1 which is the mole fraction uh, you can then get from Rolle's law which is equal to in terms for the component 1 it is x1 p1s by p. So once you have this table I want you to plot two plots uh, one is x1 on the x-axis and y1 on the y-axis on the ordinate. So this plot is called vapor liquid equilibrium plot. So this plot is called the vapor liquid equilibrium plot. The other plot which is called the pxy plot wherein in the abscissa you plot x1 uh, again the ordinate p and in the same plot we just plot y1 on the abscissa and then uh, p on the ordinate right so uh, we will end this lecture here but uh, the activity uh, for this lecture would be uh, take any so this activity here for this lecture you take any binary component system okay let us assume okay to be ideal okay like for example uh, let us take benzene and toluene right let's say benzene is component 1 toluene is component 2 
Now let's say temperature is uh, 120 degrees Celsius. Now you can use the standard references or the data book uh, to obtain what is the P1S and P2S at 120 degree uh, Celsius. So this is at 120 degrees Celsius. You need to obtain what is the value of saturated vapor pressure for this benzene toluene system. Now for this sample system, uh, try to plot uh, the PXY plot and the vapor liquid equilibrium plot. We will discuss how this plot looks like. Once you have got the plot, you also can look into the plot and list the features on this. With this, I will end this video and thank you for your patient watching and I hope uh, this procedure explained in the video is clear to you. Thank you all.